Hey y'all, it's Nikki. Welcome to another episode of the Working Mamas podcast. It has been a minute. What's good, y'all? It has been a minute since I've been on the mic. That would have been a good first line to like start freestyle. Start flowing for y'all, but I ain't got no flows unless it's statement of cash flows. That's the part where y'all are supposed to laugh. That's the extent of accounting humor. But anyway, I hope y'all are good, staying safe, staying sane during this craziness. Um, just want to talk to y'all today about some things that I've been up to. Would love to hear what y'all have been up to and just talk about how this pandemic has shifted things for us in many cases permanently and just wanting to talk through some things that I'm seeing and hearing and conversations I'm having with other people about what what's the expectation, right? This this air quote expectation during quarantine where are you supposed to be crushing your goals? Are you supposed to just be chilling out, waiting for this to pass? Like how what side of that fence are you on and really how to talk through where everybody's at. So first I'm introducing my beverage today. It's just some good old plain vinegar water. My family, kids and husband think it's the most disgusting thing ever. I keep a big jug of it in my room next to my bed. Just I drink some before I go to bed. I drink some when I get up in the morning. And those people who just like to take your beverage don't inquire about what it is, but they just want to quench their thirst with your stuff. My son and my husband have both like took a long sip of my vinegar water and they are running around like looking for the closest toilet or the sink. Oh my God, that's nasty. What did you put in there? It's like, look, oh, this trick in the book. Don't, don't be drinking something if you don't know what it is. That's, that's all that was. But here with my vinegar water for a number of reasons. I prefer to just dilute my vinegar and water instead of taking the shots because of the heartburn, because of the enamel, all that other stuff going on. But anyway, let's just see what's been going on with me. And I do want to know what y'all have been up to. So hit me up on social media at Nick Winston CPA on Instagram, Twitter, which is where I spend most of my time. And also tag me or Use the hashtag, hashtag Working Mamas, W-E-R-K-I-N-M-O-M-M-A-S. If you are listening to this and you are moved to share or, you know, whatever you want to do with your network, share or talk about something that you heard or something that resonated with you. But anyway, I have been up to some things. I've actually been doing a lot of features and collabs the last couple of months. I recently did some features with some other dope black female entrepreneurs. I did a Instagram and Facebook live with Shannon Ellis of Shannon Ellis, Shannon Ellis and Associates. She's an amazing realtor here in Atlanta. And we talked about the CARES Act and how it's impacting businesses and, and households. We also touched on the real estate market and what the buying and selling is look like looking like in light of COVID. So that was that was pretty cool. And then the tax deadline was just extended. Well, it the deadline just passed July 15th. Much to the chagrin of CPAs everywhere, but we managed to make it through. Thank you, Jesus. It was a whirlwind of a tax season and Jasmine Young, who is another awesome black female CPA, invited me to her podcast. It's called Talk Wealthy to Me, where we chopped it up about tax season, common mistakes that we see taxpayers making, why it's important to have a CPA on your team year round, regardless of how much money you make, and not just during the tax season. So it was a podcast interview, but it was more like a conversation. And, and it was really fun. So check that out if you haven't already on Jasmine's Talk Wealthy to Me podcast. So aside from that, I also learned to just sit the fuck down and rest and relax 
when I needed to. There, There's no rush to start a business just because it's a pandemic. And it's totally okay if you have binge watched three seasons of your favorite show on Netflix or Hulu or Showtime or whatever. The key is that you're doing these things on your own terms. People are saying it's okay to not be okay or during the pandemic, there's all these opportunities where you should have acquired a new skill set or mastered the foreign language or launched a business and made a million dollars from this business that you started two weeks ago. And you should be losing 30 pounds or settle old beefs or create these new relationships. And it's like, um, stop. There's no golden rule that you must accomplish things during the pandemic. Just do you, whatever that means. And there's no pressure to start something new. Instead, and what I've done and what I really want to delve into is instead of trying to look for something new, finish one of the many things that you've left undone. My podcast, this is a, a perfect example for me. I had this unplanned hiatus from my podcast, from publishing new episodes because it was just so much going on. I was still writing show notes because I had things I wanted to talk about or things that came to mind or people would ask me questions about their career or about accounting or starting a business. And some episodes are inspired by what people want to know or what people ask me. So I dropped a lot of things during this pandemic. I've said no to some things and I just took time to feel to stew, like Iyanla would say, to stew in what's been going on. And I, I gotta say, I, I'm, I'm happily and humbly saying that there's been a plethora of opportunities that have been presented to me, both through my own efforts, but hugely because of my network and the power that resides there. So don't don't sleep on your network. It don't matter when the last time was that you talked to somebody. If you got 500 plus connections on LinkedIn and all of these connections in your industry or your network, make sure you leverage those because you never know what's out there that you may not even know about. But there's still so many questions I'm trying to find answers to. Like, when can I go to the beach again? Like, that is blowing me right now. For weeks, me and my husband have been trying to figure out, like, are we going to fly somewhere? Are we going to just take a road trip? We need to call the hotels and see what the safe stay policies are. How are they taking these extra precautions? What about the protocol for the beach? Going to restaurants? All these different things. And then just thinking about my kids and other kids and how what they've known for their entire short lives has been disrupted. They know to go to school, to come home, do homework, to do their extracurriculars, to go out to eat on Friday and Saturday nights with the family, to celebrate a long week being over and all these different things that are just totally changing for them. And they haven't yet developed the mental fortitude to deal with these things. So hopefully a lot of our kids are in an environment where they're not being forced to be something other than themselves, where they're not being forced to take on adult-like responsibilities because it is tough as adults. It's hard enough for us feeling the multiple effects of COVID and how it has really changed our lives. I mean, as a busy working mom, I'm thinking about how do I coordinate my day so that my meetings don't conflict with my kids virtual learning time or what can I make for dinner that's new or that's healthy or something that you know my house doesn't fall into any bad nutritional habits when you're in the house most of the time now and you've done everything you can do you've played every game you can play you move it out I mean what can be more satisfying at a time like this than a bowl of your favorite ice cream or a hot and cheesy thin crust old world pepperoni pizza from Marco's. I mean, it slaps every time. Like Marco's is undefeated on the pizza right now. But I mean, kids are thinking about the snacks and being able to play video games all day and 
taking advantage of these relaxed rules in the house. I know my kids certainly are. So I just hope that that's all that our kids have to think about because this is a lot. This is a lot to deal with, even with the opportunities, even with the upside. This is still a lot to deal with as an adult, let alone as a child. But I will say, um, let me get a sip of water. I will say that I found myself really just wanting to sit down and chill out and relax. Like we all strive to have more chill time. And I know even as a busy mom, when I was going into my office several days a week, I was always like, oh, I wish I could do this from home or I wish I could be home and start dinner while I'm waiting for this meeting to end and all these different things. But for me, I'm always going, always working, always doing something, always into something. And I really made these diligent efforts during COVID to stop work at a certain time, to not spend my whole Saturday in my office. And when this, when the pandemic first happened, like mid-March and things shifted to this work from home and everything being shut down, first I looked at it like, okay, this is smack dab in the middle of tax season. So that's already not good, but I can get through these returns. I can bang out these returns. I don't have to worry about getting up, driving, sitting in the traffic. The time I'm commuting, I can be working. And those first several weeks, I was actually probably working more than ever, more than when I was going to my office. And I had to pull back on that for a minute. Even with my podcast, it was like, I need to record an episode. It's been two weeks, but watching Netflix, and drinking Crown XR sounds more exciting to me at this moment. You know, I need to jump on the live and do boot camp with my gym. Shout out to Effect Fitness. Because I was on that. Like, even when I stopped my work day, I would, I would de-stress by jumping on the live and doing, going outside of my backyard. It's hot. It's, it's humid. So it's going to kind of feel like the Effect workout room anyway because it'd be hot as hell in there to where even the mirrors are fogged up trying to create that same environment but it was like yeah I could do the boot camp but curling up in this sheepskin blanket with a glass of wine and watching succession sounds better to me now let me caution that because I know myself well enough to know that after a day of chilling that my ass is back up the next day in straight up work mode but not everybody has the discipline to manage their time and realize when enough is enough when it comes to chilling or realizing that okay I have been at this computer long enough let me shut it down this work will be here tomorrow those do nothing days for me have been crucial because they've been relaxing fun fulfilling and really reminded me to bask in those teeny tiny moments the time that my husband and I had a versus battle in the house and it wasn't like artists for artists it was just different songs that took us back to places in our lives and for us in our relationship and just saying oh what you know about this I bet you you ain't ready for the date family what you remember about Mercedes and and the uh I can tell something like all these different things that we we've done and having the fun with my kids and um just chilling just just seizing those moments that we often overlook or feel like we don't have the time to do it just really it feels really good to be able to stop and do that so again back to these new things instead of looking for the new things to do just finish some of the undone things on your to-do list we all have that list of many have done things or things that we intend to do or really want to do but for some reason we're just not doing it i'm financially financially <laughs> If I had an editor, I would edit that out, but I'm not. So what I was trying to say is I finally finished my bedroom makeover. I bought the paint six months ago, y'all. And it sat in the garage up until a couple weeks ago. Now, I will say it was worth the wait. 
And I wish we would have focused on that and made it a priority sooner because my bedroom has tr transitioned from like this second TV room that everybody came in with, with their food. They might have left shoes and toys. It was just like any other chill room. And now that it's been redone, my husband has been calling it the Ritz Carlton because the paint colors are soothing. I, oh my God, my husband put the full court pressure on me. I had 20 minutes to pick curtains, meaning like find some curtains, get them to the house, 20 minutes before the contractors left so that they can hang them up. So the painter was nice enough to rehang my curtains, rehang my artwork in my room and in the master bathroom. But I'm sitting here, I had spent several weeks looking online, looking for the right curtains that might have took a couple of weeks to, to get delivered. I had to make sure the measurements were right with the windows, all this other stuff. And then I ended up having to make this quick decision. Like, let me look at the stores where I can buy these and go pick them up through a drive through or something. I'm looking at the pictures online, hoping that the picture fully represents what the curtain is going to look like when I have it in my house. And then just walking around my room, walking around my bathroom, like, what is the vibe? What is the feel? I was online looking at color schemes, like what color goes with which? And I was like, you know what? Let me just go with function and feel. So let me go with the function. I need it to be room darkening. I like my room pitch black when I'm asleep but I love the natural light, so so the room darkening feature was important. Let me think about the color. I don't want it to be too overpowering because that was the problem with my last color scheme is I had some dark red in there. So it felt a little bit strong, a bit much, and I didn't want to go back to that space. And then it's like, I'm just gonna have to trust myself and do it. So they ended up turning out beautifully once they were hung up and i mean i just didn't want to jack my room up making no quick decisions but sometimes we got to think on our feet and we just got to go with with our gut and say look this is the one it's not perfect but it will get the job done and actually i feel like i couldn't have picked a better selection of curtains even with all that extra time i spent researching and looking online at all these swanky boutiques trying to find some curtains so aside from a couple things I still need to get, like a bench for in front of the bed. I'm thinking about getting a beverage cart, again, for function, and definitely a new rug. Maybe some mirror, a mirror or some artwork. My room is pretty much done, aside from that. My bathroom, I just want to get a tray for the tub and a bath pillow. I have a jacuzzi tub, so we spend a lot of time in there, so it's important to be comfortable and relaxed. But... Even going back to the beverage tray, I debated a couple times, like, do I need this? Because minimalism has become a thing for me. So I've been decluttering and I don't want to clutter my room up with too many quote unquote things. But when it comes to function, I'm thinking about how we have our drinks in there. We watch our shows in there. I keep water by my bed, as I just said. Sometimes we eat in our room and we try to find somewhere to sit the plates until we go downstairs but that's just one of the many things that's been on my list that was undone and the change though the impact it has had just by finishing my room has been phenomenal and going back to this clutter thing so overall i'm working to make my home less cluttered and more functional more of a space that i love to be in i always have but i'm just I'm not a fan of dirty dishes in the sink overnight, of having decorative things that are for decoration only, like the powder room towels and just these vases and just things that are collecting dust that I was in this space of my when I was in my little interior design space for a minute. So trying to choose function over fashionable. And there's still ways to make your house pop even when you put functionality first. So, I mean, of course you also, you save money. I was almost appalled when I was looking at the number of things that I had in my home that just, I bought just to sit and look pretty. So now I'm having to look at things like, when is the last time I used this? If I throw this out, will I miss it? Well, donate, I don't throw out anything. I, I probably donate 90% of my stuff. 
and but just asking questions like what did I even buy this for and in the spirit of mental health and just overall well-being getting rid of things that don't matter frees up my mental space me personally it makes things more clear it soothes my chakras that there's nothing that sends my chakras out of whack more than clutter and mess and unkept things so i've invested in more plants which do wonders for vibes i'm a firm believer in that i grew up with my mama being the plant mom and even to this day you go to her house and you'll find Plants around, plants hanging from the ceiling. We had a garden at one time growing up. I had one in my backyard a couple years ago. So there's there's fresh air and new vibes to enjoy once you declutter your space. So some new things I've done, as I talked about the, the podcast features and the collabs, I'm working on some new projects that have come about from people saying, hey, I think you'd be great for this, or somebody directly connecting me with an opportunity, making introductory calls and emails on my behalf, or recommending me for something. So I said this earlier, but I will say it again. Do not underestimate the power of your network. Interestingly, these new opportunities are coincidentally related to things on my goals list and things that I've wanted to do, whether it's blatant or indirectly. These new things are positioning me to do things that will help me as I grow my businesses, as I grow as a person. And it's amazing how being in alignment will set you up for greatness. Knowing who you are and where you want to go and standing confidently in that no matter what anybody else thinks or what somebody else's expectations are for your life. Being aligned and of course doing the work because there's no skating around that. But alignment will take you places. And I'm proof of that. I have seen, despite 2020 just having so many downs, so many sad moments, having us two months, two, three months into the year, ready to throw the whole year away. Despite all of that, there have been major wins. So let's not forget about those. Like, let me think. No matter how small you think they are, like what's a win that you've recently celebrated? What, what is a win that you recently celebrated? Maybe you lost two pounds, not quite the 30 that you want to lose, but you've made progress from 30 to 28. It takes a lot of dedication to lose weight and be consistent in something that it is so easy to fall off the wagon on. And that applies to a lot of things. I'm just using the weight loss as an example. But whatever you did to lose those two pounds... Keep that same energy and you'll soon find yourself 30 or even 35 pound, pounds down because it's a mindset thing, right? Winning is a mindset. You can have $10 to your name and still be winning because you've told yourself that you're winning because you thrive when your back is against the wall and this is an opportunity for you. Or maybe you're winning because you won't allow yourself to be defeated. You're winning because that $10 is $10 more than a lot of people have. Or because you know that you have the talent and the ability to turn that $10 into $100, then flip that $100 into $1,000 and keep going. Some of the biggest and most successful businesses and brands have been built off of somebody's muscle. Blood, sweat, and skills, like my cousin said the other day. Not everybody gets the $100 million cash infusion from a VC. You don't have to be winning in your current circumstance to call yourself a winner. You can be losing terribly and still have permission to call yourself a winner. 
deciding that you're going to win doesn't cost much. If anything, the cost is giving up all your feelings about self-doubt, all the feelings that where you lack the confidence to do what you really want to do, what you know you have the talent to do. Because once you set your mind to something, when you get that drive and that fight in you, you don't have the space for negative thoughts. So it's onward and upward. All right, I, I'm about to get off this soapbox, but a couple updates before I sign off. So I refreshed my website, another half thing done that was on my to-do list. It's the same dope content, different layouts and such at nickwinstoncpa.com. That's where CPA candidates and those looking for career advice find me. I've also spruced up the Winston CPA Group's page. That's winstoncpagroup.com. That's the page where entrepreneurs, business owners, freelancers looking for tax help, questions about PPP, outsourced accounting, all things accounting, that's where they find me. So if you found this podcast helpful, I would appreciate you sharing it. That also does not cost a thing. Tag me at Nick Winston CPA on IG and Twitter as you share it. Also use the hashtag Working Mamas, hashtag W-E-R-K-I-N-M-O-M-M-A-S. I'm actually thinking about bringing that hashtag back. It was popping for a minute with the busy moms and the mompreneurs. And I kind of miss shouting the moms out, but that's also the title of my podcast for, for many reasons. But I said thinking as the operative word because I have many passions and I work to allocate my time appropriately. I don't want to start it back and then things get busy and I stop promoting it, then it falls off. Hence the need for us as busy moms to figure out what to outsource. I'm willing to pay for anything that brings me extra time. So I don't know, maybe I'll look for a social media manager or something, but Anyway, thank y'all for rocking with me as always. This is one of the first episodes I've done that hasn't been CPA exam related. And that's always going to be my thing. Like when I look at the metrics of my shows, I love that I have the listenership that I do and the audience that I do. But when I look at it by episode, those CPA exam podcasts outperform all my other episodes but it's a couple things i mean there's a bunch of cpa episodes and there's not as many accounting small business entrepreneurship type of episodes like this one which is what i'm working on to put more of that out but um i'll figure it out as i go but y'all be good i hope y'all are doing well staying safe here's hey here's my son waving at me coming outside and playing basketball which means now he wants something to eat but anyway y'all be good I will talk to y'all later